In the year that King Hosiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and the strength filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings, and with twins he covered his face, with twins he covered his feet, and with twins he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eye have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the sons of him unto me, having a life coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from me, off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I had the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? And he said, Ah, here I am, send me. Amen. Deep intimacy with God, but one. The anointing is triggered by intimacy with God. Intimacy is a moment where one is wrapped up in God. You are wrapped up in God. You are sold out to God. At a place of intimacy, nothing matters. The only thing that matters is God. Nobody matters. all of his children to be intimate with him. To have strong intimacy with him. I pray that this month we will dedicate ourselves to God in intimacy. In the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What happens at the place of intimacy with God? What happens at the place of intimacy with God? Number one, guileless hunger and thirst for God happens. At the place of intimacy with God, guileless hunger and thirst happens. At this point, the hunger and thirst for food and water dies off. It is inconsequential. You could go on like that with God, all the way with God, without food, without water. For days, all you want is God. All that matters to you is God. At the place of intimacy, time, money, and material things don't really matter. What matters is God. Anytime we become we, we get into intimacy with God. God draws closer to us. That was what God did to Isaiah here. When Isaiah maintained intimacy with God, God drew closer to him. When God saw the hunger in the heart of Isaiah, when God saw the thirst in the heart of Isaiah, he drew himself to him. It was that hunger for God that made Moses in Exodus 33. 18 to 19, that made him to tell God, he said, God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. It was that hunger for God that made him to stay with God in Exodus 34, 29 to 35. He stayed with God on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights to get the Ten Commandments, which when he came down, it was broken. Uh, and then he returned back to re receive the second one again. Hunger for God. Dieless hunger and thirst for God. That was the secret behind the cry in the heart of Paul 
in Philippians 3.10. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Paul cried out because there was hunger for God on the inside of him. Because of the hunger and the thirst in the heart of Paul and Moses, God appeared to them. God will appear to somebody this morning. Amen. I say God will appear to somebody this morning. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God cannot appear to you and you remain the same. When God appears to a man, his life receives a shift. We need to be hungry for God this morning. We need to be tested for God. We need to cry out for God. What happens at the place of intimacy with God? Number two, separation happens. Separation happens at the place of intimacy. You separate yourself from people, from places, from things distracting your intimacy and concentration with Jesus. You separate yourself from them. It may be friends. You must be ready to separate yourself from them. It may be too much attention to watching of television. Too much attention to social media. To socialization. You must disconnect from them to maintain deep intimacy with God. And you understand what I'm saying? If you want to see God in everything you do, you must learn how to separate yourself from the world and its destruction. One of the reasons why God hasn't appeared to us, as it were, it is because of distractions. We are not separated. In Genesis 13, verse 7 to 18, Genesis 13, 7 to 18, we saw how Abraham was distracted by Lot. Lot was a distraction to him. The Bible says immediately when they separated because the Lord couldn't bear them together. They were always having log ahead. Always in strife. Always having fracas. The Bible said immediately when there was a separation between Lot and Abraham, God appeared to him. I said, Abraham, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, look to the west. As far as your eyes can see, that have I given unto you. When separation happens, God appears. There is nothing that brings God closer to you than separation. Am I talking to somebody here? God comes closer to the people that separate themselves from the things that are distracting them. In Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, the apostles gathered to pray, and the voice of God came. Separate me, Paul and Barnabas. Separate them. So at a place of intimacy, separation happens. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, when the apostles separated themselves, apart to go into intimacy with God, the Holy Ghost came down. Hallelujah. We need to separate from people, from places, and the things that want to distract us. What happens at the place of intimacy with God? Number three, communion happens. Communion happens. Communion happens. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to 8. Isaiah was at the place of communion with God when God appeared to him. In the place of communion, God appears. The communion could take one hour, could take hours, it could take days, it could take weeks or probably years. People that communicate with God 
Their lives are never the same. In Genesis 32, 24 to 30, Jacob's life was never the same after he was left alone at the place of intimacy. He wrestled with the man, with the angel. We must give up time for communion with God in this month of July. In Matthew 6, 6, Jesus said, anyone that wants to pray should go into the room. Separate yourself. Go into the room. Go into intimacy with me in communion. Exodus 34, 27 to 35. Moses' face shined and radiated God's glory because of prolonged communion with God. First time, 40 days. Second time, 40 days and 40 nights. Until his skin carried God, literally. He began to shine. And ordinary men could not look at his face. The Bible says in John chapter 9, verse 29, John 9, 29, the Bible says Jesus prayed. And his garment was as white as glistery. His face shined. His garment was as white as glistery. Communion with God is the secret of power with God. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, God appeared to Joshua at the place of communion. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 14, God appeared to Moses at the burning bush in the place of communion. When we communicate with God, God will appear to us. My prayer for us is that this month, God will appear to us in the name of Jesus. I said this month, God will appear to us in the name of Jesus. Number 14 that happens at the place of intimacy with God is that worship happens. Worship. Worship happens. At the place of communion with uh, intimacy with God, worship happens. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah 6, 3 to 4. The Bible says, And one cry unto another and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Worship happens. Worship happens at the place of intimacy. And the post of the doors moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Hmm. The house was filled with smoke. Worship to the Almighty God happens at the place of intimacy. We don't only come to church to worship. We should learn how to worship God in our closet. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Second Chronicles 5, 12 to 14. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asher, of Heber, of Judah, with their sons and with their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having silver and sceptres and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests. Sounding with trumpet, it came even to pass as the trumpet, trumpeters and singers were, trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpet and cymbals, an instrument of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then that then, that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not start to minister by the reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Smoke came down. Glory filled the glory. Mortal men could not start to minister. <laughs> Today it has been replaced by smoke. When they organize praise and worship service. As the praise and worship is going on, someone will carry smoke and come to the altar and we go around with it. Have you seen it before? Eh? That is artificial glory. Artificial. 
In this church, we have praised God one night in our all night. And the cloud came down. In this place, we started looking for you know, the Bible says the natural man cannot talk to the We were not natural, we were just that we were ignorant. The smoke was everywhere. We we're going around. What is burning? Going around, check at the back, check front, check everywhere. Nowhere was burning. Nothing. It was a glory. And the presence was palpable. Feelable presence that night. And I became ashamed of myself. <laughs> and it is possible. I've experienced it not once, not twice. Several. One way to Ozombo. On the Sunday that I preached, the smoke filled the room. If you've ever been to a walk, I school say, that was what happened that day. And the pastors that went with me, two of them, one of them said, nine. So this kind of grace is on you. It was like, I think that thing happened also in the Bible school I finished preaching. The same thing that even amongst to their pastors, power came down. When we learn how to worship Him, the smoke will come down. The glory will descend. The Bible said, the priest will not stand. Why? Psalms 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God dwells where praise is. God dwells where praise is. Check all the people that know how to worship God. You will see that their, their lives are saturated with the presence of God. That time that we are wasting playing worldly music, why not convert it to worldly music? Number three thing that happens at the place of intimacy with God is that death to self happens. Death to self happens. At the place of intimacy with God, death to self happens. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Until you die to self, you will not see God. Until self is dead, you will not see God. Everybody has a King Uzziah in his life. That King Uzziah must die. If you want, you want to see God in his beauty, in his glory. Pride must die. Anger must die. Lust for sex must die. Loss for money must die. At the place of intimacy with God. You must kill worldly desires. If there is no death, there will be glory. In John 12, 24, John 12, 24. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the seed of wheat falls to the ground and die, it will get forth fruit. But if it doesn't die, it will remain the same. You must die to anything that doesn't bring glory to God. Death to self is the secret of power with God. Dead to self is the secret of power with God. Dead to self is the secret of power with God. In 1 Corinthians 15 30, 31, 1 Corinthians 15 31, Paul was speaking inside, protest by your rejoicing. I die daily. I die daily. That was the secret of Paul's power. I die daily. Every day, flesh dies. Every day, flesh dies. If you want to see power, let flesh die. Let flesh die. I've been using this place as an example in 2 Kings chapter 13. 
verse 20 to 21. The Bible said when Elijah, Elijah died, after some time, they brought a dead man and put the dead man in the same grave where Elijah, Elijah was buried. Immediately when the flesh of that dead man touched Elijah, he came back to life. Now listen, when Elijah was alive, in 2 Kings chapter 4, the Shunammite woman's son died. It took him a lot of process to bring that boy back to life when flesh was alive. He sent Gehazi with his staff to go and put on the child for the child to come alive. Gehazi went with the staff. The boy didn't come alive. Then he came by himself. Prayed, the boy didn't come alive. He didn't come back to life. He now laid on the child. Stretched the, his hand to the boy's hand, his mouth to the boy's mouth, his leg to the boy's leg. Just lie on the guy and pray. And came down and walk around. Nothing happened. He came back again and repeated the same thing. And prayed. Then the child sneezed several times. It was a long process. But this time around, when flesh was no more alive, when flesh was dead, they brought a dead man and touched his bones. The dead man came alive. Power was on the bones. If you want to see power, flesh must die. Flesh must die. That thing that God is struggling with you about. There is something that God is struggling with you about. That you cannot surrender to God. It may be money. It may be watching of pornography on your phone. You go to the website and watch pornography on your phone. And God is telling you that this thing is wrong. It may be money. That God is struggling. You are struggling with God. When it comes to money, money has become your God. That to even pay 10% is a problem. Self is alive. You must die to self. In Genesis 32, verse 24 to 30. Genesis 32, 24 to 30. The Bible said Jacob was left alone. Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him. There wrestled a man with him. He wrestled and wrestled until he had power and prevailed. That's what the Bible said. And the angel touched, the Bible said the angel touched the hollow of his thigh. And he began to leave. The hollow of his thigh was where it was giving him strength to push. How many of you have done village wrestling before? The man was pushing, he pushing, pushing. He was so strong. That place of his strength that made him to struggle with the angel. Immediately he touched it. It was like this location. And the angel said, hey, you are not perfect. Flesh is dead. That thing that gives you strength is dead. What is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, no, your name shall not be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have power with God and man. Your name is Israel. Put to death that thing that is alive in your life. That thing that doesn't give God glory. That flesh. You cannot fast. Anytime you see food, all the body is shaking. Say so one to fast. Immediately it is nine o'clock. Your stomach will start making noise. He must die to it. He must die to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible said, Paul was speaking. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. He said, The life that I live now. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You must live a crucified life. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him first deny himself and pick up his, pick up his cross and follow me. You must kill flesh at the place of intimacy. If flesh is dead, you can fast for three days without food. I've done three days separately. I've done six to six for how many months? That is why in the realm of the spirit, levels are not the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? We must live a crucified life. 
Say, I'm crucified with Christ. And so forth. You know how they crucified Jesus now? Males were in the sand. I'm so. And somebody provoke you, you bring your hand and slap the person. Bah! Now me they hold the nail. Maybe the nail in my hand. That's what you're telling the person. You are the one holding it. It's possible to hold nail. I'm gonna be so. Just put it like this and hold it. Hold it. And you are just there holding it. How do we know that you are holding it? If somebody provoke you, you forget your hand on this face and go back. Let the nail be in your hand. Amen. What are the blessings of intimacy with God? I want to give you six of them in a hurry that we pray, pray. Six blessings of intimacy with God. Number one, the blessings of strange encounters. The blessings of strange encounters. People that know how to maintain intimacy with God enjoy strange encounters with God. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2 to 4. Isaiah 6, 2 to 4. We saw Isaiah. He encountered God. He encountered the seraphims. He encountered the angels. And the place of encounter with God. If you have intimacy consistently, you will be having different, different encounters with God. Genesis 28, verse 11 to 13. Jacob was one of the patrons that had several encounters with God. At Bethel, he saw a ladder connecting to heaven. Angels were descending and descending the ladder. Why? Jacob was a man of intimacy and he enjoyed strange encounters. In Genesis 32, 24 to 30, we just talked about him now. He encountered God when he was left alone at the place of intimacy. He encountered God and his destiny changed. Intimacy with God is the secret behind a changed destiny. So if you want to have strange encounters with God, maintain intimacy with you. I have had the privilege of seeing strange, strange things in the place of intimacy with Jesus. You will open your eyes. I'm telling you. Number two, the blessing of intimacy with God. Number two, the blessings of the ministry of angels. People of deep intimacy with God enjoy the ministry of angels. Isaiah 6, 2-4 Isaiah encountered angelic ministry at the place of intimacy. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 Are they not all minister the Spirit sent forth to minister for them that shall be heads of salvation? You encounter angelic ministry and the place of intimacy. Psalms 104, verse 4. Psalms 104, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says that are they not all spirits? The Bible says he made angels spirits. He made them spirits. And his ministers flames of fire. He made them spirits. Hebrews 12, 22 to 23. Hebrews 12, 22 to 23. The Bible says that we have come unto Mount Zion, a place of innumerable company of angels. They keep company with us. That was why he said, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. If God will open your eyes, you see angels. If I could be doing deliverance on a, a demonic possessed person, and the, the encountered power, and they say, I saw two angels on white standing by your side. I want you to know that the angels of God are here. Psalm 34, 7 says, They encamp around them that fear the Lord to deliver them. Angelic ministry. Psalms 103, verse 20. The Bible says, The angels excel in strength. Hearkening to his voice, doing his commandments. And the place of encounter you enjoy a ministry. Spend time with God. Spend hours with God. Three hours. Five hours. 
seven hours, ten hours, twenty-four hours, seventy-two hours. Just go like that. If we can watch movie, but one, but two, but three, but four, we should prepare that moment to pray. If you don't know what to pray, sing. If you don't know what to sing, dance. Roll on the ground. It's part of it. Maintain intimacy with God. Maintain intimacy with God. It brings power. And angelic ministry. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Very, very important. Number three. The blessing of the release of the voice of God. The blessing of the release of God's voice. God's voice is released in verse 4, Isaiah 6 4. And the voice of the dog moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house of you who spoke. Who was crying? Holy, holy. And the place of intimacy, his voice comes. It could be the voice of his leading, it could be the voice of his direction, it could be the, the voice of his blessings or announcements. The voice comes strongly at the place of intimacy. You hear somebody call your name, you hear direction at the place of intimacy. Say God doesn't speak to me. At times you, you become so, 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 the intimacy will be so solid that God will be telling you things, even as you are walking along the road. You hear the voice of God. Some of the messages we put together like this are not something that we just gather here and there. The voice of God will keep popping them in your spirit. This was the last message written that day. From 9.20, I was sitting in the sitting room. The messages of the month started dropping. Pick up my daughter and began to put them in skeletal form. I finished around around 11 something. I wanted to sleep. When this one started coming, I had to come out and sit down again. From come out from the nest. I sat down and started writing till after 12. The voice of God comes at the place of intimacy. Suleiman went to dedicate a building, a story building, a new place. He went to dedicate it. As they entered inside for prayers, he had a voice run! Run! Someone will say, run for what? He told the people inside. I just had the voice now. Run, all of them. As they ran out, the building collapsed. Now, if you stood there and say, run for one man, what's going to make me run? What's going to happen? What am I going to run for? The building would have collapsed on them. The voice of God comes at the place of intimacy with God. You hear God warning you at times on certain actions, certain things. At times I may have a meeting with you who agree to do something. And then by the time I come the next day, everything don't change. The voice came. The voice came. There were some, some of our properties that we wanted to sell. Some of the uh, iron things we bought. The tenants, we bought them. So I was discussing with the guy at the first floor that we want to sell them. All of them is there. Um, so I went there, got the phone number of the buyers. At least we could sell them at two of us in Jericho. And the voice came. Leave it. I've collected their phone number. Some of you were with me that day. I called the guy, collected his phone number. But the voice said, leave it. No, why should I leave it now? This thing will give you money. That's where death comes. You die where money be. Die to everything. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Number three blessing. Number four blessing of intimacy with God is the blessing of the release of God's glory and presence. The release of God's glory and presence. Isaiah 6, 4. The Bible said the house was filled with smoke. The glory of God was everywhere. The glory of God was everywhere. The glory was so much that the seraphim had to use six two, two feathers to cover its face because the seraphim could not be all the glory radiating from the throne. Carried two to cover the legs because of the glory and the, the remaining two was used for flying. That's why at the throne, only seraphims, cherubim and seraphims are standing on the throne. They can't behold the glory radiating from the throne. The two of their feathers will cross to cover their face. Two will cross to cover their legs and the remaining two will be spared for flying. The smoke filled everywhere. The glory filled everywhere. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 to, 12 to 14, the priest and the Levite sang, and the glory filled the temple. The smoke filled everywhere to the point that they could not stand to minister. Mortal men can't stand when the glory is a place. When the glory is on the person. In Exodus 34, 27 to 35, the Bible said the skin of Moses was shining. The glory was radiating from his skin until Aaron and the Israelites could not look at his face. The Bible said Moses wished not that the skin was shining. He wasn't aware. And natural men could not look at him. And he, he had to put napkin on his face, clothes on his face. As he would be talking to them, they would just carry clothes like this and cover his face. That's when they would be able to stay. If not, the glory from his face might slay them or blind them. That was what that agent told me some years back. He said that the, the, the glory, the fire radiating from your forehead is like the sun. It's like something that will blind somebody's eye. That was many years ago, 2005. By then we were still small in the realm of the spirit. They wanted to kill Kumui. They planned against him in their kingdom. And they said Kumui is in the, in the field. How many of you have seen football field? He's in the field of fire. And he is the one generating the fire by himself. One other one that repented. She said there are three classes of believers. She said number one, they wear military uniform. But they are walking on the ground. Number two, they wear military uniform. But they are not walking on the ground. Number three, the highest, they wear military uniform. They are walking on the air with, with bullets around them. So I don't know the one you belong. If you touch them, you see fire. If you touch them, it is your level of intimacy that places you where you belong. Where in which you say, I came to your house three times, I couldn't enter. Because fire was in the room. You get to a level where ordinary witches cannot hear you. They'll be using principalities. They'll be sending principalities. Territorial powers to be the one to rule. And yet they'll be helpless. Even Jesus, he said the prince of this world comments. It's possible for them to come. The prince of this world comments, but he has nothing against you. And Bishop Dr. Williams said it was in a play where a beam came and sat on him. Wanted to kill him. He sat him. Heavy beam. And he screamed, Jesus! And the beam took off. He sat him. He was sleeping. 
My prayer for you is that you will enjoy the blessing of God's glory and presence in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy the blessings of God's glory and presence in the name of Jesus. Number five, the blessings of purification or cleansing happens. You enjoy the blessings of purification or cleansing. That's the second to the last. The blessing of purification or cleansing. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. Isaiah 6, 5 to 7. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life coal in his hands, which he, he had taken with the tongues from the altar, the altar of heaven. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin punched. Purification take, takes place at the place of intimacy. Are you understanding me, church? This man carried sin into the presence, and the fire from the altar of heaven was used on his tongue, and he was punished. We saw it also in the life of Joshua in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Joshua the high priest. The Bible said he entered into the temple to carry out his priestly assignment. And Satan stood to resist him because he was wearing the filthy garment. And the angel was sent with fire to cleanse him, to punch him, to give him a change of garment. So at the place of intimacy, purification takes place. Sins are punched. You become cleansed. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, he saw his sins. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, Isaiah was uh, chapter 1 to chapter 5. Isaiah was always preaching two messages. Woe. Woe is me. The messages of condemnation. But in Isaiah 6, when he saw the glory, he saw himself. You know, Jesus said, before you remove the plank in your brother's eyes, remove the beam that is in your eyes. He was always condemning everyone. Feeling righteous. It was when he appeared before that holy mountain and saw the glory and he cried. For my eyes have seen the King who is the Lamb upon the throne who reigns forever. His eyes saw the King. When he saw the King, he saw his wretchedness. He saw his emptiness. He saw his sins. And he cried. He saw how miserable he was. And he cried, I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, dwelling among unclean people. When we fellowship with him, first John 1 7. When we fellowship with him, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we have intimacy with him, the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 15 3, you are cleansed. By the word that I've preached to you. You are cleansed by the word that I've preached to you. Ephesians 5 26. You are cleansed through the washing of the water by the word. Cleansing takes place at the place of intimacy with God. Purification takes place at the place of intimacy with God. Hebrews 12 24. The Bible says, that we have a better covenant with the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of heaven. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, with the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of heaven. Hebrews 12 24. At the place of intimacy, the blood speaks cleansing. 
It washes us from all sins. We are justified. Finally, number six blessing of intimacy with God is the blessing of fresh mandate. The blessing of fresh mandate or fresh mandate is received. The blessing of fresh mandate is received at the place of intimacy. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who shall go for us? Then said I, ah, Here am I, send me. Fresh mandate. Fresh mandate is received at the place of intimacy with God. When you learn how to spend time with God, God gives you mandates. Exodus 3, 1 to 14. Moses received fresh mandates. He had a mandate, but it wasn't from God. What was the mandate? He was always going into the camp of the Israelites to check what was happening at the age of 40. And he saw two, an Israelite and an Egyptian, the two of them were fighting. And he came in the process, he killed the Egyptian and freed the Israelite. It was a mandate, but it wasn't from God. He had a passion for God. The second time, he saw two Israelites fighting, and he came to separate them. You people are brothers, why are you fighting? They looked at him, they said, who made you a judge and a prince over us? Do you want to kill us? The way you kill the other person the other day. And he fled for his life. And went to Jethro's house. And began to stay there. At the age of 80, 40 years later, he received a fresh mandate from God. Go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. It happened at the place of encounter. He saw the burning bush. And the angel told him, this is a holy place. Remove your shoe. He removed his shoe. And the Lord began to talk to him on what he wanted him to do for him. At the place of encounter, people receive fresh mandates. This month, the voice of God is calling us into intimacy with God. Into intimacy with God. My prayer for every one of us is that this month, wholeheartedly, we will give ourselves to God. A lot of things happen at the place of intimacy. Music are better. Revelations are better. Messages are better at the place of encounter. Books are delivered at the place of encounter. I pray for every one of you. Come into the intimacy. Come into the closet. Remain alone with God in Jesus' precious name. And as you do, receive fresh mandates in Jesus' name. Shall we stand up and pray? Take me to the place. Thank you.
It is blessed. In Jesus' name. the screen for you to, to, to pay. After the payment, the Lord will bless you. God bless you and God favor you. In Jesus' precious name. Shalom. Hope you have been blessed by this broadcast. For prayer, counseling, and partnership, call 08050833649. And worship with us at Christ Winners Bible Church Worldwide Incorporated, 41 Okigwe Road, 2nd Floor, Aba, Abia State, Nigeria. You can join us on any of our weekday services Wednesday, Miracle Service by 5 p.m., Sunday, Celebration Service by 9 a.m., last Friday of the month, Miracle and Testimony Nights by 9 p.m. First Saturday of the month, Oil of Favor and Protection Service by 6.30 a.m. Come and be blessed.